lot of you are going to be using this camera for video. Maybe only video, some of you. And it is an awesome performer in video. Remember, you've got your 720 and your 1080. And in each of those, independent frame rates, 24, 25, 30 in your uh, 1080i. And then you've got 50 and 60 in the 720. What you're going to use that for is your slow motion. And if you do play it down at 30 frames, you get crystal clear, smooth motion. Now, this camera also has a USB 3 output and, very importantly, HDMI output for outputting to a video recorder. So you don't have to put it in the camera. You don't have to use the cards in the camera. There's lots of hard drive recorders and such that can use that HDMI input. The D800 is capable of taking phenomenal quality HD movies. And we're going to talk a little bit about the movie settings and why you'd use the different modes. So we go into the shooting menu, down to the very end, movie settings, hit the set button, and the first one is your type of HD image you're going to take. Uh, we'll talk about these other a little bit too, but I'll talk about those first. The destinations, where those movies are going to go, you can choose either one of the cards. The microphone here, we're going to hit set, and it's going to give you a sensitivity setting where you can adjust the sensitivity of the microphone, and you can check that on a meter on the bottom. Uh, or you can put it on auto, that's AGC, automatic gain. You're going to find, as we can see now, we're, we're moving the meter quite nicely on automatic gain setting, but what you're going to also see with automatic gain setting is that your background noise, the ambient background noise, is going to be higher than if you use manual settings. And it's highly suggested that you do use manual settings, that's my suggestion, anytime you have the time to set them. So unless you're in a real pinch and just set it on auto and run with it, you're going to end up with much higher audio quality if you go to microphone sensitivity here and go ahead and set it up with uh, with the with the thing by manual. You just do that with your uh, go ahead with your multi-position controller, and you can really confirm that too because uh, as I'm talking now, when I'm not talking, you're not going to see the meter move at all. But um, if we were on auto sensitivity, oops, let's get that again here. We go to auto sensitivity and hit OK, uh, it's going to land up bringing up the background noise quite a bit more than you really want. And you'll see that that meter is sort of bouncing around uh, when, you, when you don't want it to be. See the little blip at the bottom? That's a car going by outside and it's picking it up. So I'm going to go back to the left. Now we're going to go up here. Uh, before you select your frame size and frame rate, it does have a movie quality setting. And that's really going to be the amount of compression applied to the file. Uh, and of course, you know, you want higher quality, you're going to use more memory area. If you want normal quality, you can go with that. I'm going to leave it on high quality. So here we go up to the top, our frame size and frame rate. Hit that, and we've got a lot of selections here. You can see that there are basically um, different frames per second, FPS over there, and then you've got the actual size of the image. 1920 by 1080 at 30 FPS being the top quality image. That means it's going to be the fastest frame rate with the largest amount of resolution, and that is true HD quality. Uh, if we go down to 25, that's a rate that's, um, that's used sometimes uh, in, in Europe. Uh, here we would, and, and 24 as well, but these are when you want the more film-like look because in a regular old celluloid film, they'd be running at a 24 frame and it gives you that more suggested movie look. And of course, this file size is going to be smaller too. We get down here to 1280 by 720, which is commonly called 720 and 1080, these two sizes. 720 is basically a little bit more than half the resolution of full HD. But what this gives you the option of doing is setting for 50 or 60 frames here, plus your, plus your other settings, which were the, you got 25 and 30 actually, slightly different. But what this gives you the big option of doing is doing slow-mo in 50 and 60 frames per second. At 60 over here, it's doing twice the frame rate, and you can slow that down when you're editing down and get a really crystal clear, smooth, uh, slow-mo rate on that. And also, the video looks pretty darn good and fluid as well because you're taking twice the frame rate if you wanted to just edit it at 60 frames per second. So it does give you some options, and of course, these smaller sizes and smaller frame rates use less memory space.